Hello and welcome to Improve Your Voice. My name is Darren McStay and today I'm going to be giving an assessment to a man who sent me in a video for review. This man is named Scott. He's uh, one of my customers, one of a, a client who's doing the currently studying on the eight week Improve Your Voice course. And he's a voiceover artist and he just asked me for some quick notes. So I'd sent Scott a script and asked him to send it over to me and maybe a little bit of improv. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through the recording he'd done and as a way to obviously give Scott some notes, I thought it could be useful for anyone out there who's watching who also might be a voiceover artist or looking to get into it. And maybe you can look at uh, some of the things I, I feel Scott does that work and maybe also even look at some of the things which might be pitfalls or kind of bad habits to fall into, which I think Scott um, might also be uh, careful of or something that you know you Scott hello could be wary of so I'm just going to play through his video bit by bit stop and then talk about it as we go and that's going to be today's video hopefully it's useful for you okay so here we go once upon a time there was a rat who couldn't make up his mind whenever the other rats asked him if he would like to come out hunting with them he would answer in a hoarse voice I don't know and when they said would you rather stay inside he wouldn't say yes or no either. He'd always shirk making a choice. One fine day, his Aunt Josephine said to him, Now look here. No one will ever care for you if you carry on like this. You have no more mind of your own than a greasy old blade of grass. All right, okay, so let's, um, let's get into a positive one here, Scott. I like your timber. Right, I like your tone. I think you've got a really nice, natural, warm kind of resonance to you, and I like that. That's really... Um, it's, it's a good quality, especially for voiceover. Uh, my suggestion though, actually, would be, because clearly this recording has been um, somewhat compressed, and I can hear it, is that in between when you're speaking, you have no more mind of your own than a greasy old blade of grass. Yeah, what happens is when you're speaking, you can hear it, and when you stop speaking, it goes dead, because the, you've over compressed it. So it, basically when you're speaking, it sounds noisy. Um, what I would do is I would not compress it at all, e like, and, unless you're asked by someone. Uh, don't take the compression on there. It actually thins your voice out somewhat. Okay, it might feel like you're kind of getting more levels, but you shouldn't need to if you're using the microphone properly. Uh, what I think's happening here is because you're looking to the screen and you're slightly turning away, but not raising your voice, um, you've the compression has made it equal even though you're speaking over there so that's a handy trick but I think to get the most out of your voice you want to stay very close to the mic much closer and if you can maybe move the screen so it's behind the mic so you can look up to it without moving your head rather than turning like this then you'll have less need for compression and therefore a better quality and you'll pick up more of those great tones that you already have and stick with them do you know what I mean so maybe that's just something to practice the placement of your mic and the uh, where, where the screen is in the paper. Also, if you're turning your head, that's maybe where you're losing some of the text. I prefer to, as I do text like this, have it directly behind and breathe in. And as I breathe in, read the text. Then as I breathe out, breathe out, read that sentence. And it's okay to pause in between sentences. There's no need to rush. But if you get them right first time, it, uh, because you've taken the time to do it, 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 it's good. But of course, if you're recording from your home studio, you've got all the time you want. I just say maybe uh, less turning, less compression, keep it you know, as close and as nice and warm to get those great tones that you have naturally out. The young rat coughed and looked wise as usual, but said nothing. Don't you think so? said his aunt, stomping her foot, for she couldn't bear to see the rat so cold-blooded. Now, here's the thing, Darren. I notice that if I uh, stop and, and work on a British accent, it makes me slow down and the words come out very differently. So here's an example of that. Okay. One night, the rats heard a loud noise in the loft. It was a very dreary old place. Oh, actually, I just got to pick you up on something here. Um, another good thing about taking your time in between sentences is that it's going to allow you to quietly inhale air. I mean, it's different when I'm doing like a video or something. Sometimes I'm just spewing out ideas and I'm taking breaths quite quickly, like, you know, almost like a singer. But when you're doing the, the voiceover, breath is normal, it's natural, but you're breathing uh, uh, through your nose and 
it's more like we can hear you resting and changing and resetting yourself, whereas we want to hear the character and we want to hear you in the moment. So just a little uh, trick for that again is just, just just allow the like finish the sentence and allow the breath to come in slowly and gently rather than trying to take it. Um, just because, and obviously you're breathing through your nose and that's a quick way to top up so you can carry on speaking. Like you know, if you're playing the didgeridoo or something and it just sounds a little bit unnatural. So just be wary of that, that's all. It's not, it's not a huge problem um, and some people do that. And obviously, of course, different voices do different things but it's just something to be wary of, that's all. It's not you know, like a main concern. Like the rats heard a loud noise in the loft. It was a very dreary old place. The roof let the rain come washing in, the beams and rafters had all rotted through, so the whole thing was quite unsafe. I'd work on the British accent a little bit, mate. Um, I, the speed of it did not seem to slow down to me at all. Maybe you thought it was because you're more conscious of it, but uh, it, it didn't seem to be, you know, like, like pace-wise any different. I would work on it a bit, though. There is a different air placement, and you hadn't changed your placement. Of course, you've got some of the dynamics of the language, definitely, of, of the accent. Um, I think you just got to maybe narrow in on the, on certain things, and especially the air placement, because your accent is kind of it, like, you send the air a bit more into your nose, uh, which actually, I'm not sure if this is a thing or not, it sounds a bit like you've got a bit of a blocked nose, um, because obviously you're sending air to your nose, but it doesn't, it seems to be a little bit, there might be a bit of inflammation there. I'm not sure if that's true or that's something you have or suffer with normally or if it's just that you've got a bit of a cold coming or allergies or whatnot. But two things, if you're doing the British accent, that should appear less because you'll be sending the air to the gum ridge behind your top teeth and that air placement is so vitally important for the British accent, um, especially when you're going for the RP, which you are, um, which I can hear, it's there, but you gotta be careful that you don't get into a bit of, hello Mary Poppins, uh, which is Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins, of course. Uh, just, again, it's not like a main concern and it's good that I can hear the difference, just I'd focus in even more, even more on the air placement and that's, you know, that's quite tough, but it's, um, it's gonna make you stand out with the accent that much more. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm being very conscious of the words uh, or if, if there's something else going on. Now, if I... Something else going on. That n nasal breath is just too loud. You want to kind of just not try and top up with the nose, top up with the mouth. It's quieter and it gives you a fuller breath and it's just, you know, it's just better for this, um, this medium, that's all. Well, if I just talk in a, a normal voice, like if I had a couple drinks with my friends and, and you're not thinking at all, this, would, this is what it would sound like, and it's a, a much more northeastern accent. At last, one of the joists gave way, and the beams fell in with an edge on the floor. The wall shook, the cupola fell off, and all the rat's hair stood on end with fear and horror. This won't do, said the leader. We can't stay cooped up in here any longer. So they sent out scouts to search for a new home. A little later on that evening, the scouts came back and said they had found an old-fashioned horse barn where there'd be room and board for all of them. Yeah, the, you're doing a lot of um, out-breaths with the nose as well. You're finishing a line. And I actually didn't want this, a good thing about this and something I'd, I'd be wary of. The good thing is that it's, it's good that you finish the air because um, snatching an, a new breath is is a bit unnatural, but you do finish breathing out when you when you finish speaking. And I think that's kind of a good trait and kind of very naturalistic. But I would, again, breathe, don't breathe out through the nose. If you're speaking with your mouth, you're going, I'm talking, talking, talking. <laughs> you know, it's just a bit strange. And, it, and of course, again, it's the, it's the volume of it. It's the noise that it makes that uh, we want to avoid. So that's why using your mouth Breathing when you're speaking is just a bit easier. And I think maybe if you were to, especially in the English anyway, work on the air placement being more in the mouth, it might uh, help suggest the, the breath being more in the mouth and less in the nose. Because if this is like a habit that you've gotten into, then it might be quite difficult to realize for a while. But when you're con now you're conscious of it, it's just something to consider and something to listen out for for yourself. In the evening, the scouts came back and said they had found an old-fashioned horse barn where there'd be room and board for all of them. One thing, another thing I like about you, Scott, is actually that you do continue. You are able to continue, and uh, you're quite a fast thinker, I think, and uh, that's important. So even though you're, you skipped over some of the words and you made some of the words your own, I'm not sure if that's actually by choice or not, so forgive me. Um, if, you, if it wasn't by choice, it's good that you can keep going and you're keeping the momentum up. That's 
kind of hard to do. That's you know that's quite tricky. So practice getting the words right, and like you're bang on. You're right there. And we'll do one more sentence here with me paying very close attention to my diction and pronunciation. Right, the diction and pronunciation. Let's go. The leader gave way at once. Company fall in, and the rats crawled out of their holes right away and stood on the floor in a long line. Just then, the old rat caught sight of young Arthur. That was the name of the shirker. He wasn't in line, and he wasn't exactly outside it. He just stood by it. I wouldn't say that you necessarily are articulating any more. Um, you just changed your posture, which is interesting, actually, because when you did that, a change happened. Um, but he, now, again, because you're this distance from the microphone and you're slightly turned over, uh, you've got the compression up so you can hear it nice and clear, great, but un sometimes when you focus into the mic, there's a whole new level of, um, there's a whole new level of intimacy that happens to the mic and it, you know, we, we hear, we get the narration voice much clearer. But then when you're putting this character voice on, you, um, you pulled back a bit, you made it, you, well, maybe you didn't realize it, but it felt like there was a bit of an insecurity about putting a, a uh, the voice onto it, fall in, and you like sucked it in. The leader gave way at once. Company, fall in. You could actually do that in full voice, and you could actually do that and go for it a bit more. Fall in, but just turn your head to the side, like I said. So if you had been on the mic, you could have used that opportunity to turn your head to raise the volume, and then you wouldn't have to kind of pull back from it like you did on that fall in part. Let's play that again. Company, fall in. Fall in, it's just, you know, you, you, it's like, it's a company, fall in! It needs to be kind of forward and you're kind of pulling back with it. Does that make sense? Um, hopefully it does. If not, you can ask me in the email. And the rats crawled out of their holes right away and stood on the floor in a long line. Just then the old rat caught sight of young Arthur. That was the name of the shirker. He wasn't in line and he wasn't exactly outside it. He just stood by it. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm starting to wonder actually because of the text was so different if you have rewritten it yourself or if you have got a different version online somewhere. Maybe that's happened because I know the, um, I thought I'd sent you a version but it's possibly, I mean this word shirker w wasn't in there and this hunting thing. Uh, so maybe you've actually got a different version to me so I apologise if I uh, picked you up on that. So look, look, let's look at the, let's highlight the positives and highlight the, the areas for concern. Uh, positives are that your instrument sounds pretty good. Do you know what I mean? You're nice and relaxed and there's a kind of, there's, there's a nice uh, sort of natural flow and tone to your voice. So when you're speaking, it sounds uh, c g like um, conversational and that's really key. Some people try to be a bit too proper and it sounds weird on the microphone. You don't sound weird, you sound natural. So you'd be really good for commercials. This is a, like, a, this is a, this is more of a, testing thing and this wasn't I wasn't you know the idea wasn't really for you to be recording it like as well as you have most people just do it into their phone but I it's good that you did because now I can look you know I've had an opportunity to see you working uh, in the voiceover kind of scenario and that, I guess that's what these notes are mainly on but if we go on to your voice again you've got a lot you know lovely warm rich tones that's fantastic a real conversational speech about you and and that's really good I mean, you can work on the accents and like the air placement, as I mentioned before with the English, but being able to make it natural like you did is, is very key. And so like, you know, like you're ahead of many people right there. Um, again, I'd lower the compression and work on your mic control. So practice getting closer to your mic. And if you need to maybe put the screen directly behind and slightly up so you can uh, look up like this and stay talking into the mic. That's gonna help just for quality of sound. And then of course, if you had to raise your volume, turn your head rather than like messing around with the, with the um, controls of the compression. It just makes it sound weird somehow. Watch out for the nasal breathing, breathing through nose. Again, I wasn't sure if you've got some information like an allergy or a bit of a cold at the moment because I haven't heard your voice before. So this is the first time I'm hearing it. Uh, it would be interesting to hear what you sounded like if you didn't have the headphones on and you just spoke into the microphone without listening to yourself because that also does something else as well especially if you've got an effect on in there or some compression uh, when i work like when i've gone into um 
When I record for myself, I often take the microphone off because you can get into bad habits of listening to yourself too much as you're speaking and not focusing on what you're doing. And that's just a, like a little bit of a trick that I learned. But if, of course, if I'm in a studio and someone else is recording me, I need them on to, you know, to communicate. Uh, but I always get them to turn the volume down. I don't really need to hear it so much. I wanna concentrate on the text and let them do the job of, of the sound engineering. And if you're doing voiceover work, which you're sending to other people, like an engineer somewhere else or a director, they'll add the compressions they need. So you just gotta get a good quality recording that doesn't you know, clip or is too quiet. Other than that, mate, I think you're you know, definitely on the right path. Um, I hope you're enjoying the course. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. And that is, I hope this hasn't you know, pulled you apart too much, but you know, I said I was gonna be honest and it's not gonna be beneficial if I didn't give you any notes to take away that you can work on. And so that's what I think you can work on. I hopefully I've highlighted some of the positives about you as well. Uh, so thank you for sending that in, Scott. I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying the course and I look forward to hearing what your you know, testimony or review from that is. So everyone, show Scott some love. Love to hear your input. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Let's see. Uh, th thanks everyone for watching this uh, has been a slightly different voice analysis today of Scott and thank you again Scott for sending that in my name is Darren this is improve your voice and until the next time look after your voices I have so many tales to tell and up till now I've been telling them real badly so I hate myself and all my faults because the one thing time won't heal the loss of days gone by